And I pray that somebody will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior this evening. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everybody out there say amen, amen, amen. All right, saints of God, truly a blessing again. Uh, worshiping with you. Let me get my clicker right. This evening, I want to speak to you and study with you on the topic, is it time to leave the cities? Is it time to leave the cities? This is constantly a trending topic all over the globe right now, a trending topic all over the globe. Is it time to leave the cities? Also, it is a trending topic within the church. Is it time to leave the cities? We are finding that it is not just trending, but that we have been seeing mass exodus. And so we find online, and this is from July 13th, uh, where it, uh, the caption says, urban exodus is COVID-19 hollowing out America's cities. Data points to a flight for the suburbs. So it is something that is being documented that this is presently happening. Person are leaving the cities because of COVID-19. Uh, we also see um, on for, um, from Forbes where it says mass exodus. Can America's uh, cities be saved? Can America's cities be saved? Interesting. Can America's cities be saved? Mass exodus is happening. And then we also see uh, in the Cleveland Fed, it says, did the COVID-19 um, pandemic cause an urban exodus. So we are seeing it all over that persons are actually leaving the cities and there is a great concern if the cities are being hollowed out. I am asking today, Seventh-day Adventists, Christians, friends, evangelicals, Catholics, whoever you are and whatever you, your denomination or your spiritual persuasion is this evening, are you, uh, have you through this period of COVID-19 contemplated or have that question crossed your mind that you might need to change your locations. Tell me in the chat. I want to know if this is something that you have thought about yourselves, if this is something that you have prayed about, if you really want to be in the urban, um, in the urban centers, or if you want to move over into the suburbs, or as we say in Jamaica, uh, the countryside. There, uh, there is much prayer going up as it pertains to the COVID-19 situation, and is it time to leave the cities? Christians are concerned. People are concerned all over. And as we know, saints of God, the cities are becoming more and more unsafe. We, are, we, we know that in the cities, people live closer together. We are closer, mashed together. We know, saints of God, that we do not have uh, the necessary, as we call it now, social distancing. Uh, we are finding out that people are becoming scared. But listen to what the Bible says as it pertains to this fear factor. Uh, we find in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standed for the children of the standed for the children of thy people. And there shall be, listen to this carefully, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So the Bible here, and I want you to, now, 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 I'm going to, oh Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. I have to pause. The Spirit said, I must tell you again, share now the link with somebody. Share now the link with somebody. That person that you're sharing the link with this evening might be the person that finds Jesus tonight as their Lord and Savior. If you're on uh, um, Zoom, share the link. If you're on YouTube, share the link. If you're on Facebook, share the link. Please share it with somebody. Tell somebody that they need to hear this topic this evening, my friends. And so we hear the Bible saying that Michael, uh, the great prince, will stand up for his people from Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. And the, however, the Bible uh, then juxtaposed uh, that presentation with the fact that, and there will be a time of trouble, such as never was a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. Listen to this thing carefully, saints of God. So greater than World War I, 
greater than World War II, greater than the Black Plague, greater than any of these diseases, circumstances, or uh, great mass, mass, uh, mass um, destruction that we have been seeing around the world. The Bible says, this is a time, a time of trouble is coming that the world, the nations have never seen before. However, it says that those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life will be delivered. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. The Bible is saying, if you're covered under the blood, you will be delivered, my friends. I, I thank God for the blood. I thank God for the blood, my friends, the blood that covers, the blood that saves, the blood that keeps, the blood that causes us to endure. But saints, this is not the first time this has happened in history. We find, my friends, uh, that, uh, that there, uh, there was a people over in Europe uh, that took a boat called the Mayflower. And uh, in the bur burning in each and every one of their hearts was that desire for freedom. They took a pilgrimage and they were called the Pilgrim Fathers or the Founding Fathers of the United States of America. They were running from Europe over to uh, this new land called the Americas. What, was they, what were they running from? They were running from the tyranny, uh, from the oppression, from the persecution, from the murder, from the destruction, from the disastrous attack of the Roman papal power, uh, from the power uh, that, uh, from the, from the, the religious political power of Europe, from the kings and the pontiffs of Europe, saints of God. These were people that were uh, called heretics. These were persons that were chained and that were killed for holding a page, just a page or a, a small portion of the Bible. These were people, saints of God, uh, that uh, would not recant their beliefs upon the very death of even their children. These were people, saints of God, that saw their homes and their properties seized and taken uh, by, uh, by the, 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 their, their government. These were people, saints of God, that saw the oppression of um, generation after generation up to the extent that nearly 50 million of Christian souls died uh, in various conditions because of a persecuting and a oppressive power religious political system these were the peoples that took this boat over to the americas and they uh, made a commitment to themselves and to a nation uh, that they would never ever again have such a government such a tyrannical government and so they bled and spoke of this word of liberty and freedom and they sought to have it ring across the length and breadth of a nation they wrote the amendments or the constitution of the united states uh, um, amendment num um, uh, uh, the amendment number one says congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or uh, the prohib uh, the prohibiting uh, the free exercise thereof so congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting uh, the free exercise thereof. They are saying Congress, the government, must never ex um, establish a religion that would hover or that would rule over the people. They believe in freedom of religion, my friends. Then uh, the Declaration of Independence says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are the pillars upon which this fledgling, youthful nation was established, saints of God. They believed in liberty. They believed in God. Upon their very monies was written, in God we trust. This, it was out of uh, this, ty this tyranny and this um, a murderous society that this nation of the United States was born, my friends. God respects human freedom. And we saw that in the beginnings of the United States. We're in the Bible. We see that in heaven, in heaven, God respected the freedom of his created beings to the extent that the devil, Lucifer, 
could object and even rebel against the Almighty God to the extent that Revelation, uh, Revelation tells us in chapter 12 that he drew one third of the stars of heaven. God respected the right of man to choose who to worship in so much that Adam and Eve could choose not to worship, in, worship God by rebelling uh, in eating of the, the fruit that he had told them not to eat. Listen to what Joshua chapter 24 and verse 13 says. Joshua 24 and verse 13 says, Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Saints of God, guess what? Pastor Atkins cannot choose for you. Your grandmother cannot choose for you. Your uncle, your aunt can't choose for you. No one can choose for you. You must choose Jesus for yourself. Jesus will not force you. You must choose for yourself, my friends. Revelation is crystal clear coming from the mouth of John the Revelator. Coming from the mouth of John the Revelator. And the spirit of the and the spirit and the bride says, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Whosoever, saints of God, that means you and that means me. Whosoever, my friends, that means your brother and your sister and your grandma and your aunt, your husband and your wife. Whosoever, my friends, that means your common law husband or your common law wife. Whosoever desire, let him take the water of life. How? Freely, my friends. God says salvation is free. Revelation's final issue revolves around worship and freedom of conscience. Worship and freedom of conscience, my friends. We are embarking upon a time when our rights and our freedoms will come under great persecution. Saints, do not waste the time that we have. Be men and women that are wise in judging the times that we are living in. Let us review this topic uh, just quickly. As we looked at the mark of the beast last Saturday, we found out in Revelation where the Bible says, and then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and 10 horns and on his horns, 10 crowns and on his head, a blasphemous name. Now the beast, which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and his great authority. We see that revelation, uh, revelation through John pulled from the book of Daniel, brothers and sisters, as Daniel presented these various beasts, the lion and the bear and the leopard and the undescript beast. The lion represented Babylon. The bear represented Medo-Persia. The leper represented Greece. And then the undescript beast represented Rome. And that undescript beast had horns upon its head that represented divided Rome. And the Bible says a little horn came up amongst them speaking perverse and great and, and blasphemous words. And John the Revelator, pulling from the book of Daniel, presents now this end time beast system. Saints of God, the seven identifying marks that we looked at for the beast. And we'll just quickly recap. One. It received its seat of government from the pig from pagan Rome. It would be a worldwide system of worship. It would speak blasphemy against the Most High God. It would be a persecuting power. It would reign for one thousand two hundred and sixty years. And um, the beast, the beast's deadly wound would be healed. And then finally, the number of the beast, which is the number of a man, is six. Six, six, brothers and sisters, we studied this in details, detail just on this weekend, and I pray that you took your notes. This beast, saints of God, that is presented here, Revelation chapter 13 speaks about another beast. Walk with me, brothers and sisters. Revelation 13 and verse 3, and all the world wandered after the beast. Saints, there are some things in this study this evening that I don't know if you're going to hear it anywhere else. But you must hear it here because we are living so close to the end of time. And so I must present to you the word of revelation in, uh, in, 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 in present context so you can understand it. Watch what is happening, saints of God. The entire world has wandered after the beast, saints of God. From Castro in Cuba went and kissed the ring of the Pope. From Obama in America, brothers and sisters, and every other government have seen it a great privilege and joy uh, to go and to pay homage uh, to this beast 
power does the book of revelation describe the rise of a new world uh, a new um, world let's look at it how does america or the united states fit into all of this let us analyze that my friends listen to what the good book says the good book says and i behold another beast so first we saw the first beast and then here the bible says then he behold another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon remember on saturday we found out what horn represents horn represents powers my friends all right uh, um walk with me a little bit further who is this second beast that the uh, bible presents to us first clue it rose it ro arose at the right time what was the right time revelation 13 and verse 10 Revelation 13 and verse 10. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Brothers and sisters, remember that we studied the mark of the beast and the period of which uh, the Roman, uh, the Roman uh, uh, pagan and pontifical power came to rule. We found out that from 538 AD on to 1798, 538 to 1798, uh, from uh, the giving over of power to the pontiffs by Constantine uh, to the removal of power from the pontiffs by General Berthier, Napoleon's general, we saw that the, this 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 beast system, this religio-political system, lost their power and great prestige, my friends, and went into uh, went into total anarchy and collapse. But we saw that the power was returned to this beast system. Walk with me a little bit further. Revelation 13, verse 3. Revelation 13, verse 3 says, And I saw one of its head as uh, one of its heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And we saw that that happened. Watch what happened, saints of God. And I want to say this to you so you can be clear. As I said, you might not hear these things anywhere else, but let me tell you. After the deadly wound was inflicted upon the Roman power, they did not die, as the Bible says. But um, there was an underground movement that began to return power prestige authority and military and military strength back to the clutches of rome we see now that as united states came up after this fall of this great power they mimicked this first beast they mimic the first beast. They mimic in, archaea, in um, their ar architectural designs. Uh, this on your, uh, um, well, it might be on your right, my, uh, on your right of your screen, you will see the St. Peter's Square there in the Vatican. On your left, you will see uh, the United States. They mimic even in that. Look at the second clue, saints of God. It arose in at the right time. What is the right time? It says, and I, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So he came up from where? He came up out of the earth. So he came up out of the, um, first in the right time, after uh, the fall of the Roman power, which was the first beast presented in Revelation 13. Second, he came up out of the right place because the Bible says he would come up out of the earth. The first beast came up out of the sea. Waters, as we discussed and studied on Sabbath, represents populous people, population, where you had masses of people. But the second beast, it says, came up out of the earth. You had um, a fledgling group of people. United States came up in North America or in the Americas where it was not as populated as in Europe. Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15 tells us the waters which you saw were, uh, which you saw were the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, and nation, nations and tongues. So the Bible is its own expositor. It says what? The water represents people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So here we find that the first beast came up out of the water, out of a very populated area called Europe. We studied that in Daniel chapter 2 also. Then we find the second beast coming up out of the earth, the sparsely populated area. We had the Indians of North America were there, but it was as sparsely populated, not as Europe was. So the very opposite uh, um, uh, description of these two places. If the water represents a populated area, the earth must represent an unpopulated area. Look at this, the third clue, saints of God. It is depicted as a new nation. It is depicted as what? 
a new nation. Saints, don't, I am laying the foundation. Stay with me. Write these things down. We got to open some things up, but we have to lay the foundation first. So thirdly, it depicts our what? new nation. Let's look at what the Bible says. And I beheld another beast. So this is not the same beast as was there before, but another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. So this second beast, uh, another beast came up out of the earth. He had two horns, saints of God. He was like a lamb, but he spake as a dragon. Watch these words carefully. Saints of God, the spirit is telling me again, saints, Take the time, tell somebody they need to be online right now studying with us. Think about who you can tell about tonight's presentation. Come along with me. So one, we find that this is another beast that comes up out of the earth having two horns speak. I'm looking like a lamb, but speaking like a dragon. Walk with me, saints of God. We see that this nation came up as a lamb-like nation, very soft very gentle. They were about peace and equality. The government was set up as such, um, brothers and sisters. Uh, but the Bible says that this lamb-like beast would also speak like a dragon. Walk with me a little bit further. Fourth clue, it is a democracy. It is a what? A democracy. Walk with me a little bit more, saints of God. And let me say this really quickly. I am not bashing America, but we need to see where America falls in prophecy and every other nation on the earth. America is in prophecy as being the strongest and greatest nation on earth. America's um, beginnings were, as a matter of fact, one of the strongest beginnings as it pertains to nations. They begun their, the nation upon the very word of the true and living God. But saints of God, we must be willing to listen to the entire prophecy. We must be open to listen to everything that God has to say, saints of God. The horns are a symbol of power on these horns. There are no crowns as we saw in the old beast, no kingly authority. This is in contrast to the first beast of Revelation 13. Remember the first beast had horns and it had crowns upon the horns. The crowns represents kingly authority. In Europe, there were kingly authority saints of God. Remember that we said that there were um, the 10 nations in, in um, Daniel chapter two, but we saw Pardon me, Daniel chapter 7, but we saw that three of them were destroyed. Walk with me, brothers and sisters. No kingly authority was found in the second beast. Why? Because it was a democracy and not a, 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 not a monarchy, saints of God. There was no king. There was a government. The power lie with the people. Listen to what the Bible says in Revelation 13 and verse 1. Revelation 13 and verse 1. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on its head a blasphemous name. This is the first beast. So the first beast had horns, uh, meaning uh, authority and power, and it had crowns, meaning kingly, um, um, kingly authority. But the second beast um, did not have that, which represents the United States of America, brothers and sisters, we know uh, that this is what the United States was from its beginnings, and this is what it continues to maintain. Clue number five, my friends, walk with me a little bit further. It is a power of worldwide influence. So it is a power of worldwide influence. Is that true? Oh, yes, brothers and sisters. America is the most powerful nation on planet Earth, has the large, one of the largest armies on planet Earth, the most equipped army on planet Earth, spends the most on military power, uh, um, um, uh, more than any other nation on planet Earth. Also, saints of God, America has more atomic weapons than any other nation on planet Earth. America, saints of God, has the strongest economy on planet Earth and the strongest dollar on planet Earth. Saints, America is by far the most influential nation on planet Earth saints of God. So the scripture is true. Revelation 13 and verse 12 declares, Revelation 13 and verse 12 tells us, and he exercised all power of the first, all power of the first beast before him and caused it what? The earth and them which dwell therein to worship who? The first beast who what? 
deadly wound was healed. So we studied already that the first beast whose deadly wound was healed was the Vatican. All the criteria is given in Revelation and in Daniel showed us that clearly that this is the Vatican power. However, we see here that there's a second beast that came up after the Vatican gain, um, received its deadly wound and was uh, um, in 1798. After that, another um, beast came up. But the second beast that was so powerful, that was a lamb-like beast that spoke as a dragon. The Bible says that he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. So the second lamb-like beast will cause the world to go back to Mother Rome. Saints of God, we are seeing that we are in a time of panic and fear right now. Listen, saints of God, a great American city exodus is happening right now. The time has come, people are saying, to leave the big cities for good. This is what, this is the, this is the, fear the panic that is happening in the United States right now. People are fearful for their rights. People are fearful for their freedoms. They are fearful for, the, uh, for their liberties. They believe that the foundation of, the, um, of America is being shaken. But can I tell people around the world, my little Jamaican something, when America sneeze, the world catches the cold. And so whatever is happening in America today, believe it or not, it will be happening around the world sooner than you can think my friends listen carefully ability to enforce the mark ability to enforce the mark revelation chapter 13 and verse 17 i want you to be with me now we're studying now saints revelation chapter 13 and verse 17 and that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so the first the second beast will um, um, ensure that folks will worship the first beast remember the first beast is the uh, is a religious political system with the pope at its helm um, Thessalonians tell us that this is what is called the son of perdition who sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God and so the second beast which is the lamb like beast called the uh, America will lead us to worship the first beast what needs to happen in order for the beast system to stop uh to stop people from buying or selling if they refuse the mark what 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 what, what is it we need to have a worldwide financial system whereby everything bought or sold is through electronic means and not cash walk with me now saints of god walk with me so you might be asking then why did um the government print cash to begin with everything is a transition Everything is a process. It is a movement to one place. Before, when America just started, in the beginnings, if you study about the history of money in, the, in America, the first time they did bartering saints of God. People had gold. When there was the gold rush in California and different places like that, people had cattle, people had farms. But then the central bank system um, started to be pushed by the Freemasons. As we, and, and I can show, I will show you through the process of the week what the different founding fathers or the, the presidents of the United States said about this group. These folks came in and they organized what is called a central banking system. And from the central banking system, all gold, property, and all these things were owned by the one entity. And then they started printing out what is called dollar bills, or when we just started with these things, it was called a note a note or a dollar note. It was basically a, a, a note saying that you owned something. And this is the, 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 this is the, 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 the cost or the, 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 what the value of whatever you own. So it was called a dollar note. Watch this now, saints of God. So are we seeing then now the world moving towards a cashless system? Are we seeing that right now? Oh yes, we are. Look at it, Sweden, close to being a cashless society. Um, cash is dead, credit card next. Nigeria, this in Africa, deploying a biometric um, technology throughout the banking system. Uh, MasterCard tracking global economic um, economies uh, heading to a cashless society. So the MasterCard system tracking everybody heading to a cashless society. Israel leaders are pushing for a cashless society. The UN World Food Program pushing smart cards and a, a digital payment. Cashless society driving the gains, um, saints of God in Rwanda. Watch this now. Jamaica, this is from the Jamaica Observer in 2018. Jamaica's, Jamaican solely warming up 
to a digital banking system. Right now, every one of our banks, think about it, Jamaicans, every one of our banks now are encouraging us and nearly forcing us to do now online banking. They don't want to print anything out for you. They're not sending any arm um, statements in the mail anymore. Why? Because we are going to a cashless society. And why must we have a cashless society? That they can control what you buy and what you sell. Is that enough, saints of God? Oh no, my friends, come along with me because we're studying prophecy now. The Bible says they will have control. We also have this movement or this great movement in technology called nano um, technology. Or we, some people um, know uh, about nanobots. Right now in the United States, uh, the, the, the military already start, um, started using nanotechnology. But nanotechnology is even more than that because they are now making things. If you see, I place a little thumb there. Uh, um, robots that are so small that can even be placed in the body. And many doctors and physicians and doctors are uh, physicians and, and, and um, uh, other specialists, you know, uh, researchers are saying this is a good thing because they can use nanotechnology to go into the body and to fix certain defects, which is very true. But also, saints of God, we must remember that the hearts of men are desperately wicked. And whatever they find, they find an evil way to deal with it. So we find that this is happening. Where will we hide? We're talking about running. We're talking about leaving the cities. We're talking about running. I find I know people right now in the United States who are locked and loaded, meaning that they have guns stacked up. They have food stacked up. Some of them building bunkers under the ground and they're uh, in their properties out in the bushes. But you can't hide the saints of God. You can't hide. These on the screen are what is called robot dogs that are now being utilized in the army, United States Army. These can carry hundreds of pounds, run in sand, in snow, in whatever the, 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 the the, 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 the terrain, they do not get tired, they do not eat, and saints of God, guess what? When you have to sleep, they do not sleep, my friends. And so how will we get um, run? How will we hide from this type of technology that we are seeing around us? If that is not enough, they have robots. So these are uh, these um, saints of God are robots that they are preparing uh, human-like uh, 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 creatures that can jump, run, outrun, outjump, and, and, and outswim, and the rest of it, you and I. The question must be asked, how will we get away? We're talking about leaving the city and when, saints of God. I am here to tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt. The good book says, Jesus will take care of me, my friends. Are you hearing me? Uh, brothers and sisters, I will follow the lamb wherever he goeth. Because the Bible promises me that he, the almighty God, will take care of me. Brothers and sisters, follow me to our sixth clue. Are you with me? Clue number six, change in character from lamb to dragon. Change in character from lamb to dragon. The Bible says in Revelation 13, verse 11, Revelation 13, verse 11, he speak as a dragon. So he first came as a lamb, but then he's going to start speaking as a dragon. So the United States came up with the two horns. Let me just track back a little bit. With the two horns, one representing religious power, one re um, um, representing political power. And they said these two powers must never um, meet, not as it was in Europe where there were religious political power. They said these must be separated, the separation of church and state, it is called. But the Bible says this second beast will start speaking like the first beast. How does a nation speak? Let's find out. A nation speaks through its laws or our, our, our legislative body. So it speaks through its laws are those who interpret the laws, my friends. We, are also, we also must understand that there are many laws on the books that we are not knowledgeable of. We, oh, for many years, we have spoken about the blue laws that, con, that are on the books, but there are many other laws that are on the books. I showed you some that in the case of a crisis, certain laws change and certain powers are shifted from one arm of government to the next. Saints of God, we are in a time right now. We are in a time right now that if we are not ready, if we are not wrapped up, if we are not tied up, if we are not tangled up in Jesus Christ, we will not be able to make it, my friends. The Bible says in Revelation 13 and verse 12, and he exercised all power of the first beast. 
before him and cause it, the, uh, cause it the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So the second beast will exercise all the power of the first. Why, pastor? Why will the second beast exercise all the power of the first? Let me tell you why. Because they are connected. They are of the same family. They are of the same origins. They, follow, they are following each other. I showed you this before when we studied Daniel 2, uh, that it is uh, the research was done um, by the news network that says Obama was the 11th cousin of Bush and so on and so forth. But saints of God, do you know in modern times that Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton are also um, distant cousins? They say they, uh, I believe, 19th, um, pardon me, 19th um, cousins, saints of God, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton to be um, distant cousins as family tree shows. They share the same set of what type? What type? The same set of royal ancestry, my friends. Are you understanding what is happening here? So the same royals, remember, it says the first beast had, horn, had crowns upon his horns because there was what? There were um, kingly powers in Europe. And the second beast had none of that. Saints of God, no kingly power. But the people in the United States are still attached by family or bloodline to those who are royalties and they are family members, many of them who are running for political office. Walk with me a little bit further, saints. I told you this evening, you must understand. We must share important things with you. We must share important things with you. Listen to me carefully. The Bible is saying, Revelation 13, 15, and 16. I am not saints of God. As we're on this program, we are not sharing our, our ideas. We are sharing the thus saith the Lord. We do not care about ideas. If the Bible does not say it, I don't want it. Listen to what the Bible says. Revelation 13, 15, and 16. Uh, he was granted power to give what? Breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should um, both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be what? To be killed. Saints of God, isn't this the same first beast power where they persecuted uh, the pilgrim fathers in Europe to the extent that they had to leave Europe and come over to um, the new world, America? Then we're finding that this new beast, which is the lamb like beast, is going to exercise the same power of persecuting folks if they don't worship the, 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 the first beast. Watch what is happening, saints. The founding fathers, many of the founding fathers of the United States were also themselves Masons, brothers and sisters, having the same worldview and the same um, um, plan and uh, plan and seeking to um, execute in the same way for Mother Rome. This is why the plan and the trajectory has not changed. The Bible predicts, and listen carefully, the Bible predicts an erosion of the free of our freedoms when church and state will unite. So the Bible is predicting that the founding fathers who wrote these uh, magnificent things will, uh, um, the, uh, this nation by the founding fathers will start bringing church and state back together, a religious political system, and you will see your rights being eroded. Let's look at this. The book, Great Controversy, page 588, under the caption, at the end of religious liberty in the United States, it says uh, the, protest, uh, the protestants of the United States will be foremost in stretching their hands across the Gulf, the Gulf to, the, um, to grasp the hands of spiritualism. It continues, they will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, this country will follow in the steps of Rome in doing what? Trampling on the rights of conscience, my friends. This is what we are seeing. We are seeing America stretching across the abyss to hold the hands of Rome. We are seeing the fulfillment of Bible prophecy right before our eyes, my friends. Now they are gladly and openly saying we finally have the first Jesuit Pope. Why are they so bold? Because now the beast is coming out of hiding, my friends. Walk with me. We are seeing it right in the United States. Pope Francis himself came and addressed the, um, the, 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 the leaders of the country, the political leaders. This power, this religious power is now becoming again a strong religious political power, a strong power across uh, the world, my friends. He is dubbed in um, the times the new world Pope, my friends, this is serious times that we are living in, my friends. How will this occur? How will this great uh, um, thing occur of eroding of our rights? One nation under God will soon be passed away. Listen to what the justice, the chief justice says. 
American Cheese Justice says, the wall of separation between church and state is a metaphor based on bad history. Listen to it. A metaphor which has proved useless as a guide to judge. It should be frankly and explicitly abandoned, said the Chief Justice. Saints of God, they are ready to throw into the trash bin the separation of church and state because they want the power of the church and the power of the state together. Why? To accomplish what they could not have accomplished all these years. Saints of God, walk with me a little bit further. What will lead up to this union of church and state? And he both uh, and he um, doeth great wonders so that he make it fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by this by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast says revelation 13 and verse 13 and 14 revelation chapter 13 13 and 14 it says that there will be great miracles you know what Saints, this presentation of miracle means mysterious and miraculous or out of the normal things will be happening, brothers and sisters. Watch, the Bible tells us. The Bible says, for they, for they are spirits of devils. They are spirits of what? Devils. I already share with you uh, the uh, Illuminati, the Freemasonry, uh, the, uh, the, 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 these, these groups that have, are focused or are focused and penetrated in devil worship, saints of God. The Bible is clear. It says they are the spirit of devils working what? Miracles. So the spirit of devils working what? Miracles, which go it forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to what? The battle of the great day of God Almighty. They are bringing, to, bringing together a coalition. They are bringing together their powers, but God will have the final say. It says, and the beast was taken, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets, and wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that are received, that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, uh, the lake of fire burning with brimstone, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 20. So it says they will perform miracles, but they will not be successful, saints of God. Walk with me a little bit more. Jesus predicted a period of extreme uncertainty and insecurity before he returns. Are we living in that time right now, my friends? Are you living in financial, um, a financial insecure time? Are you living in a financial uncertain time? Are you living in a, a time of um, insecurity where you do not know if your rights are secure, if you are, about, if you are able to go out and to come in safely? We have murders on a scale like we have never seen before. Sickness on a scale like we have never seen before. We have uh, uh, all type of, uh, uh, of devious acts on a scale like we have never ever seen before jesus predicted that this would happen before his coming could it be that a return to god's a return to god uh, uh coerced by religious li religious li legislations will be seen as the answer to what to what waning moral values economic collapse and the what natural disasters is it possible that all of these things will be used as a, a, an excuse to bring in new religious le legislation? Well, it says the nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be what? There will be great earthquake and, uh, in various places and famine and pestilence. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to be um, to the synagogue and to the prisons. Saints of God, you will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. Luke chapter 21 and verse 10 and 10 through to 12, a time of great trouble is about to come upon the world. It has been planned out. It has been, uh, it has been properly strategized. We are living right now in the end of time. We are being tracked when we, are, when we leave our houses. Our phones are tracking us. The internet is tracking us. Everything that we utilize is now being tracked. Saints of God, you can't run right now and hide. In Jamaica, we have our 
Jamaica I. So wherever you're going, your license plate is being tracked. Are you hearing me? If that is not enough, you have chips in your car that tracks where you drive. Saints of God, for those of you who want to say, I'm going to go and get a piece of land way out in the bushes and live out there. You can't hide. They have an infrared sensor sensing system, heat sensor system uh, to find you. They have machines and, uh, and nanobots and all type of different technology to find. You can't hide. But when we are covered, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, under the blood of Prince Emmanuel, when we are covered, the Bible says no harm can come nigh us, saints of God. They are preparing. They are preparing. How will this happen? How will this great erosion of our rights happen, saints of God? Listen to this. Coming from the faxcompany.com. It says the next global crisis is already here. The next global crisis is already here. And it's even worse than COVID-19. Imagine the, imagine the, uh, pardon me, one minute, saints. All right, come along with me, saints. Imagine the, the arrows of, of COVID, of coronavirus, compounded and made prominent. Watch, a uh, permanent, pardon me. Watch this now. That's climate change. Politicians who care about the future can, can't wait to act. There is a summit coming up November the 1st where there are decisions to be made on climate change using. Um, the directives of the, Pope, uh, the, of the Pope, he wrote a, a, a manifesto for climate change and they are bar bargaining on using that to make changes around the world. It is saying there is something coming that is greater than that of COVID-19. Listen to what is being said here. Liberty, May and, May, uh, and, May and June of 1980. It says, if Christians unite, we can do anything this is what um, Christians, uh, 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 nominal Christians are saying in the United States. If Christians unite, we can do anything. We can pass any law or any, or any uh, amend, amendment. And that's exactly what we intend to do. So the Christians are uniting with the politicians and they are saying, uh, as Christians, if the, all the Christians unite, they can do whatever they please. Isn't it happening, saints of God? Is it coming together? It is coming together right now. The issues that everything revolves around right now. One, the authority of God's um, eternal word. Two, loyalty to Jesus Christ. And three, obedience to his commandment. You must, one, have uh, re recognized God's divine authority. He says, remember the seven-day Sabbath to keep it holy. Brothers and sisters, it is his authority. Number two, loyalty to Jesus Christ. We are saved through Christ and through Christ alone. We have no higher power on planet earth, under the earth, uh, uh, invisible or visible, uh, that is a higher authority than that of Jesus Christ. We must be loyal to him. Number three, we must have obedience to the 10 commandments, not some, but all the 10 commandments, brothers and sisters. This is your mandate in preparing for the end of days. You are running, you running. And Mark my words, the day is coming when we're going to have to run, when we're going to have to say, uh, like the angel said to Lot, um, tarry not in all the plains, saints of God, brothers and sisters, that time, however, is not yet. This is a preparation time. We must now accept the authority of God's eternal word, the Bible and the Bible alone, solo scriptura. We must accept the law and we must be loyal to Jesus Christ in our life, in our, in our walk, in our talk, brothers and sisters, and we must have obedience to the Ten Commandments. Revelation 14 and verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and are the faith of Jesus Christ. It is time now for us to stop depending on our own strength and our own wisdom and to depend on the almighty God, my friends. It is time. It is high time. We will not um, bow. We will not bend to any our uh, human power that exalts itself above the power and the authority of the almighty God. This is what um, po, uh, this is what um, Pope Pius said. Listen to what Pope Pius said. This is in April 30, 1922. He says, you know that I am the Holy Father, the representative of God on earth, the vicar of Christ, which means I am God on earth. This is what they believe, saints of God. And they have brought all the religions to themselves. Religions from east, west, north, and south have come to pay homage. Even those who oppose them 
uh, um, over in Europe, such as, uh, such as the Lutherans, when Martin Luther went and opposed the Roman church by nailing the 95 Theses on Wittenberg's door, saying he will not uh, recant from believing in sola scriptura, uh, that no pope, no um, pope, nor any uh, 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 cardinal can forgive his sin. Brothers and sisters, that has long gone. Uh, the, 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 the Lutheran church has gone and shake hands with the Roman church. But praise the Lord, the Bible, the Bible still stands true. Uh, the coming crisis is similar to that of the day of Daniel, uh, the Babylonian king, a powerful world leader, established a counterfeit image and compelled the worship. Um, worship contrary to that of God's command. But there were three Hebrew boys. There was a man called Daniel who said, we will not bow and we would rather to burn. Saints of God, are you understanding what is being said tonight? Uh, that you and I must make our decision in our hearts right now that we will stand for truth though the heavens fall. We will be true to Jesus opposed to everything else. We are coming to a time when we are going to have to run um, and leave the cities. But for now, we must preach the everlasting gospel of Prince Emmanuel. We must let people know that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein where sinners can plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stain. We must sing, I will follow thee my savior, whether soever thy lot may be, where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I will follow thee. Brothers and sisters, it is time that we preach the gospel like we have never presented it before. We must believe in what the Bible says Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44 and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed uh, the, 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 the prophecy is sure and the interpretation certain brothers and sisters God says let them do and let them think what they want but I will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed and when they believe they can overcome God's people when they believe the changing of man's laws and their technology can overcome God's people the good book says in Daniel 12 and verse 1 and at that time shall Michael praise the Lord thank you Jesus and at that time shall Michael shall Michael shall Michael shall Michael stand up for who shall Michael the great prince which standed for the children of thy people brothers and sisters a time of trouble is coming but the bible says michael shall stand up that great archangel our savior of all saviors our god of all gods the conquering line of the tribe of judah that breaks every chain he is going to stand for you he is standing for you now he's standing for you in your children's life he's standing for you in your in your your lost job he's standing for you in your bankrupt situation he's standing for you in your your broken relationship he's standing for you in your weakened christianity he's standing for you right now michael shall stand up but i heard the songwriter say stand up stand up for jesus he soldiers of the cross lift i his royal banner it must not suffer loss from victory unto victory his army shall he lead till every foe is vanquished and christ is lord indeed i wish that we might stand for god for the bible says jesus will stand up for us when will he stand and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time that at same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered praise the lord the lord says we are going to be delivered brothers and sisters so what must we be doing right now what must we be doing matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 matthew chapter 24 and verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world and as as a witness to all the nations and then 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 the end will come saints of god i'm not afraid of what is about to come upon planet earth I'm not troubled nor perturbed. I cannot wait for that great blessed getting up morning. I cannot wait for that day when Jesus Christ will come, when my pa passions will be purified, when my problems will be um, rectified, when my sorrows will be, uh, will, will be pacified, when my pains will be, will, will, will be satisfied. Saints of God, I cannot wait when my goals, when my goals, when my goals, when my goals, when all my goals will be prioritized, when my sins will be mortified. Can you wait? I can't. 
can't wait, saints of God, when my devotion will be intensified, when my praise will be magnified. I cannot wait, brothers and sisters, when my joys will be realized. I cannot wait, saints of God, but, be, but until then, I'm going to keep on walking. Until then, I'm going to keep on preaching. Until then, I'm going to keep on accepting the blood of Jesus Christ that is efficacious to save humanity. Are you out there and do you need Jesus? The Bible says there's coming a running time. It is very, very soon. Very, very, very soon. We are going to have to like those in the like those in the days of uh, like those in the days of of lot when the angel came and held his hand and he says escape ye for thy life tarry not in all the plain a day is coming uh, when the cities will not be our dwelling place anymore we are gonna have to find the mountains and the catacombs and the caves for our dwelling place uh, but my lord says i will protect you he says i will send a flood out for you and it uh, i will send uh, 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 send out my angel for you and they will hover around about you brothers and sisters god has already put a plan in place to protect us are you hearing me and the bible says after this great tribulation jesus christ is going to put in his appearance i wonder tonight i wonder tonight if there is somebody out there that would like to choose jesus that would like to be ready before his soon return. That would like to be prepared for what is about to come upon planet earth. That would like to be covered under his blood. That would like to be covered, brothers and sisters, that no harm might come nigh thee. I wish I had somebody out there today. I'm going to ask you if this is your desire in the chat right now. For your family members, for your friends right now in the chat. Make your calling and election sure. You have never chosen Jesus as your Lord and Savior before. As a matter of fact, don't write it in the chat as yet. Don't write it in the chat. I want you to be praying. I just want you to hold up your hand right now in your home, wherever you are. Christian, non-Christian, whoever you are, just raise up your hand right now and say, Lord, I see the great desolation that is coming upon the world, but I want to be ready. If your hands are raised in your home right now, if your hands are raised in your home right now, if your, your feet are tingling because the Spirit of God is touching you right now, I want you to just raise your hand in the home. Now I want you just to go on your instrument and I want you just to press if you are raising your hand right now, Christian or no Christian, whoever you are, I want you to press right now um, the link, uh, the, 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 the icon, uh, Jack, that the raised hand icon just place it just raise your hand right now in the chat if your hand is already raised physically now just praise press your raised hand icon right now in the chat i'm watching i'm watching i'm watching the hands must be going up right now people are saying i want to be ready based on what is coming upon this world i want to be ready brothers and sisters there is coming a tsunami there is coming a tsunami this what we're facing with covid19 is just the tip of the iceberg there is coming a tsunami after this and we we saints of God must be ready. We must be ready in our hearts. We must be ready in our minds. We must be ready now before it is eternally too late. Is there somebody out there, brothers and sisters, that is saying tonight, I want Jesus. If you have raised your hand in the chat, not yet given your life to the Lord, I want you to place your number there saying, Pastor, I need a special call from you. If you're local or international, if you're in Timbuktu, if you're in Nigeria this evening, I want to call you. If you're in England this evening, I want to call you. If you're in uh, uh, US this evening, I want to call you. If you're in England this evening, across the Caribbean, I want to call you. If you're anywhere across the length and breadth of Jamaica this evening, I want to call you. If your, hands is, if your hands are raised right now in your home, you must be raising the hand in the chat. And all you need to do is to place your number there. I don't want anything else. I'm going to take those numbers right now. I'm going to ask my team just to write um take those numbers down for me i want to call you i want to pray with you i want to encourage you and i want to assist you to the foot of the cross if this is your desire the hands should be going up in the chat right now whoever you are wherever you are my my tech team you must be taking notes right now this ain't no joking business we're serious we're serious we are serious tonight every name every name every number must be taken tonight are you hearing me there is somebody out there right now that needs the blood of jesus christ in a way that you have never needed it before you might be sick on your de on your on your hospital bed uh, um, right now but you need jesus and you need somebody to just put it in the chat for you can i tell you something brothers and sisters it was just today it was just today my wife um learned that her sister uh, her sister-in-law died from covid19 just this uh, just this morning just this morning we're living in a serious time brothers and sisters went into the hospital died from covid19 
brothers and sisters. We are living in serious times. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. Make your election sure right now. Choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you seven seconds, seven seconds. You must be raising your hand right now saying, Jesus, I want to be baptized. I want to be rebaptized. I want to be saved, whoever you are, whatever you are. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I'm giving you just a few seconds. We are past our time. We are past our time. I only have two more minutes with you. Two more minutes with you. Two more minutes with you. I'm going to be praying for you right now, right now, saints of God. I'm going to be praying for you. The hands are going up in the chat. I want to pray a prayer of healing for anybody who, has not, uh, who, who, who are struggling right now with illness. I want to pray a prayer of healing this evening. I want to pray a prayer of recovery this evening. And I want to pray a prayer of salvation this evening. Is that your desire tonight? Is that your desire tonight? Whoever you are, I see you, Sister Susan Wallace. I'm pray I will be praying for you. Who is that your desire tonight? Place it in the chat for me right now. Place it in the chat for me right now. Place it in the chat for me right now. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thy compassion they fail not. As thou hast been, the forever will be. Great is thy faithful. God is faithful, saints of God, to heal you. Great is thy faithfulness. He is faithful to save you. Place it in the chat right now. Place it in the chat right now. I'm going to be praying for you. Saints of God, I'm going to be praying for you right now. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. The hands are going up. The numbers are being placed in the chat. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. I see you. Uh, um, Owen Campbell, I see you. I'm praying for you right now. Your heads are bowed. Your eyes are closed. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. I'm still watching the chat. I'm still watching the chat. Uh, the prayer requests are coming in. The requests for salvation is coming in. The requests for baptism are coming in. Simply place it there. Simply place it there. We are, pray we are about to pray. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Divine eternal Father God, I come to you in all seriousness this evening. We understand that the time that we are living in is so late right now, but we understand the immaculate and the, and the magnificent power and love of Jesus Christ, that you love us when we are in our sin, that you love us when we are broken, that we love, you love us when we have messed up, that you love us far beyond and passing ourselves. And because of this, you have given to us the word of the, your word, uh, the true word of God and the word of revelation. Tonight, we have eaten at your table. We have supped at your table. And tonight, we're asking you, almighty God to do a special work on our behalf. Heal those who need healing. Lord, right now I pray through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will transcend uh, physical space and you will find every person that is struggling this evening be it COVID-19 or any other malady in the body, any other disease or any other pestilence in the body, any aches or pains. I pray now through the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, that that thing might be rebuked from the body. I pray so you. I pray you'll place the blood of Jesus Christ upon every heart door this evening, that every man and every woman that came on this evening, not yet choose, choosing, not yet have chosen Jesus as their Lord and Savior, or maybe have wandered away from the heart, that you will give them no rest tonight that they will make their calling and election sure before it is eternally too late. And I pray that you'll cover all families, cover all believers, cover all studiers. And I pray, Lord God, that when all is said and done, we'll have a place in your kingdom. This be my prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the chat all over say amen. If you are blessed tonight, just say amen. If you are blessed tonight, just say amen. To God be the glory. Great things. He has done. Brothers and sisters, I ask you again, if you need assistance coming to Jesus, we have baptism this Sabbath.